All right. Let's check this out, folks. Boom, that's the notification. That's the notification we were looking for. Oh. There we go. All right. As usual, we have about a 20 second delay between uh, what I'm seeing get recorded versus um, what is happening on the stream. Let's uh, let's do our shares uh, as usual. You will see me awkwardly sharing things around because uh, I got to get the word out. Um, if you are watching, do me a favor, uh, if you could, and hit that like button, hit that share button, tell some people this is happening. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about a couple, a uh, couple. Of, I think a, this is going to be a little bit different than than some of the things that I've been talking about as of late. Um, so once again, if you are watching, give me a few minutes, and if you could, uh, hit that share button. Tell the people this is happening. This usually takes me about, I don't know, five to ten minutes to do. So, um, you know, uh, this 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 usually goes a little bit faster if if some folks uh, get the old uh, old word out. Oh man, I'm messing up the spelling of here. Uh, so, be patient. Hang in there. Stick around. Stick around to the to the show. Because uh, we'll be jumping into the check-in. We'll be jumping into the topics. If you would like to, something that I do is uh, called the check-in at the top of the show, um, where I tell you about what's going on with me physically and mentally. Uh, talk about mental health, talk about physical health, talk about any sort of projects that I might be going uh, excited about. Um, so I encourage you to do the same thing in the comment section um, if you would like to leave a comment about how you're doing, leave a comment about uh, uh, something that you're excited about, a project that uh, is coming up that you are particularly uh, j uh, jazzed about, if, if, if I can use that word. Uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead and leave that in the comment and then we will, we will read it. We will celebrate your accomplishments together. We will be in support of each other together. Something to kick off the show. Uh, so yeah, you, you know, do, do that. That, that's a, that's a, that's a cool way to, to kick things off. I think, I think it's a pretty cool way to kick things off. I don't know about you guys. Uh, but, uh, we are going to be, we are going to be into this thing in just a few minutes. So if you're tuning in, hang in there. I'm just one person. I don't have a staff to, to help me with this kind of kind of thing here. I can't afford one because I'm because I'm kind of poor. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a pretty small operation, so I kind of do this stuff uh, on my own. So I appreciate you guys um, being patient with me while I get all of these shares out there <clears throat> and get the word out about uh, about the show. And like I said, you know, hitting that share button, hitting that like button, all of that, uh, all of that stuff helps a whole lot. Let me think of what groups I normally put this thing in. Sorry, I kind of, I kind of lost my, lost my brain for a second. All right, I think I have like one more group that I can actually put this into. Do do do. Yeah, I'll put it into this one. All right. Um, I'm going to send out my invites to uh, to the people that regularly view this show and leave comments and come hang out in the chats and all that sort of stuff. Um, so let me do that, and then I will uh, kick this bad boy off, and we will dive into these subjects and uh, and have a fun a fun time, you guys. I think it'll be a good time. I'm excited about these 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 topics to talk about. Uh, I don't know if you guys are or not, but I am. I'm excited about it. 
And isn't that really what matters? It's are you excited about the thing you're doing? I think that's what matters. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm biased. <laughs> We're almost, we're almost done here, folks. We're almost done here. I was listening to uh, a spoof video earlier today where uh, they did like a, a parody song of um, about, about COVID-19 through Bohemian Rhapsody. So that's, so now Bohemian Rhapsody is kind of stuck in my, in my head, <laughs> which it's not a bad song to, to, to have stuck in your head uh, in the least. Um, so yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was good, good stuff there. Almost done, almost done. Making sure I invite everybody that normally participates in this thing. Do, 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 do. Participation song there. Okay. All right. I think we're ready. I think we're ready to kick it off. We have sent out all of our invites, or as many of them as I can probably send. Um, so, a uh, couple of things up at the top, as I normally do. I have a new album coming out. You can pre-order it for a dollar uh, off of the Bandcamp. You can check out that link I just posted there that uh, uh, shows you... A preview and and it gives you the pre-order link link exclusively from Bandcamp. And when you're on Bandcamp on June first, you'll get the album, um, and uh, it gives you bonus tracks that are only available on the Bandcamp stuff. It'll be available on all the sort of streaming platforms and all that fun stuff as well. Um, but the Bandcamp also gives the most back to artists. They're doing a thing where all through the summer they are giving a hundred percent of. Um, the revenue back to the artist, uh, which is cool. And, you know, like no other really streaming or downloading platform for uh, music, comedy, whatever, for, you know, all of the entertainment that you do is 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 really doing that. So that I think that's pretty cool. And that's why I kind of push the band camp a lot more. Um, they seem to be a lot better than uh, a lot of the other uh, streaming and downloading platforms. The other thing I want to talk to you guys about is my upcoming uh, virtual stand-up comedy shows, the Citizen Revolution stand-up comedy show. We just had one on Friday, May 22nd, that went really, really well. And I'm very, very excited and very, very pleased about how they're going. Uh, and as I mentioned yesterday, if you weren't, if you didn't tune into the ones yesterday, is um, it's really cool to see like um, fans from all across the country uh, hang out in the chat rooms. Uh, with each other and and chit chat with each other and 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 like laughing together and stuff. It it's it's very very cool. Makes me feel it makes me feel good and warms it warms the cockles of my heart. You guys, it warms the cockles of my heart. Uh, so that so they've been going really well. Um, I'll be posting clips from the show because each show is going to be different. Uh, each show is going to have uh, seventy five to eighty percent new material every single time. I'm going to try to have a theme surrounding each show, um, and I'm doing them every Friday in June. So uh, the link I posted there will take you to the tickets to all of them. And if you get go to the June 5th show, something that you can do with the June 5th show is purchase a ticket for all of the June shows under one banner so you don't have to worry about getting tickets each and every time. Um, all I'll really ask you to do is, um, like you, I, I, I always have a hard time explaining this the first time, uh, you purchase the ticket, like you purchase the ticket for every single show. And then I'm going to uh, include a code. So at the end of the June 5th show, if you want to come see the June 12th show, because you purchased the ticket for it, 
uh, I'll email you a code. So you go to the June 12th ticket link, you type in the code and you get a, and you get the free free link to it. The reason why that's important is because the ticket link site is how I'm going to be able to send you all of the login information for the show. Uh, because like I said, I'm just one person. I don't have like an assistant or whatever helping me with this stuff. So I am the one that's sending you the emails personally um, through the ticket link. So it gets sent out to all the people that, that bought tickets and it's uh, streamlined and, and I don't go uh, insane the day of the show when I'm trying to remember all the material and go over the technical aspects of the show as well. Uh, so that helps me out a shit ton. So get your tickets. Uh, getting those tickets is imperative. Super important. Uh, make sure that uh, things are secure. It makes sure that uh, no unwanted guests are in the showroom. And it also makes sure that, um, you know, I don't go crazy the day of the show, <laughs> tracking people down to to get them the uh, get them the ticket links and stuff. So, um, and if you are a sustaining member, uh, you get a, a free ticket to the show anyway. Uh, you just got to check your email for that. And I just posted the link to the sustaining membership um, and the donation site. So if you want to, you can make a donation. Um, all of my material, all of these videos that I post are are free. They're uh, they're they're free. Of like I don't charge anything to watch these live streams. Obviously, um, so I depend on uh, I depend on your donation. I depend on uh, you know you guys uh, deciding that you want to support my work. Uh, there are some pretty awesome people that have already become uh, sustaining members of my content. Um, and uh, I have to apologize because I normally post all of the videos that I've put out throughout the week up on the Patreon page. And, uh, uh, and that happens every Thursday. And I did not do that this week because I got caught up with the Citizen Revolution show. So I apologize for that. Um, I will get them up today after this video because I, uh, I kind of realized that while I was taking a shower today. <laughs> um, sometimes I, you know, you, you, you just kind of you just kind of lose track of things. And I'm trying to be uh, a lot better about that today. Um, a lot better about that. Um, just in general, I think um, it's, you know, keeping up with all of the projects that I've got going on. Um, and the last thing I will say is I've been uh, thinking about this lately is doing these shows, doing all the stuff that I'm doing. I do pull a lot of like 12, 13 hour days. Uh, like I literally go, like I usually get things kicked off, uh, or I try to get things kicked off by like 9am, but sometimes that doesn't happen. You know, it's usually like 9 30, 10 o'clock when I'm, when I'm sitting down at the computer with a cup of coffee and getting my day going. Uh, but I don't really stop until like 10, 11 PM. Um, you know, it's sort of an all day thing. Uh, you know, every so often I get to take a break, go for a walk, do some exercising and, you know, check watch a show or, or decompress or whatever. But I, I usually run top to bottom, um, doing all the things that I like doing, doing these videos, doing the researching, doing all this stuff. So, uh, what I think I've decided is once a month, one day out of every month, I need to take a, a full day away from the computer, a full day where I'm not sitting at this spot. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, not staring at a computer screen because every, so, uh, I, like today I'm, I'm definitely feeling like the, you know, the, the pinches in the back of my head, uh, that are related to, um, looking at a screen for too long. Um, and I, and I know that's going to get worse if I don't, if I don't, uh, take some time away from it. So I think this Friday, uh, because I don't think I'm going to schedule anything for Friday. I haven't scheduled anything up to that point. Um, you know, I have content coming out that, that I have to make for every other day of the week. Like tomorrow will be another live stream in the evening. Um, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is usually me working on the podcast and me working on the citizen revolution shows. Um, so because I have those obligations on a weekly basis, uh, Friday seems like the day that I can just decide, I'm, I'm going to decide to just kind of take off and not be on the computer. I'll probably do some social media things. I'll probably be able to answer a few things via the phone and, and e you know, emails and things of that sort. But I got, I got to take that day off or else I might, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll probably just burn myself out. And I've burned myself out two or three times just in this pandemic time alone. Um, so I'm taking the time for me. I hope you guys are fine with that. Um, if, if you're not, you know, leave a comment or whatever. 
uh, and and I'll tell you I'm I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> so, uh, with that said, uh, let's uh, let's dive into our stories for the day. And as usual, um, I encourage you guys to leave comments. I won't read the comments as they come in, but I will read them at the end of each segment. We're going to talk about two different subject points today. Um, and I will, you know, I can put them up on the screen like this, like, boom, hey, look at that. This, there, there's, a, there's some handsome guy that left a link uh, to check out possibly a new album that he's dropping. That's pretty cool, right? We'll, do, <laughs> we'll pop that up and, uh, you know, we'll take a look at the comments um, at the end of each segment. So uh, without any further ado, uh, let's kick off into our very first story which is uh, recently we saw that, uh, I don't know if, it, if you guys caught the story or if this slipped through the cracks or not, uh, but I caught it. Uh, a couple days ago, uh, Jack Dorsey, who is the CEO of Twitter and Square, decided that he's going to uh, give $5 million to Andrew Yang's uh, Humanity First. I think that's the name of the organization. I should double check that. But Humanity First, Andrew Yang's uh, organization, He's going to donate five million dollars to make a case for universal basic income, which, as we remember, uh, was Andrew Yang's sort of flagship platform, right? Um, and I, I was a fan of Andrew Yang. I, I thought he was a very uh, affable personality. You know, he was he was a very gregarious guy, and he had a uh, an interesting way of introducing the idea of universal basic income. And I'll talk about it, that a little bit more, just to uh, recap and refresh for you know folks that might not be familiar with exactly what it was, or or or, or sort of my coverage of Andrew Yang stuff, because I do have a lot of Andrew Yang uh, videos um, that I've done in the past. Because uh, universal basic income is something that I've been talking about for a number of years. I've, I've, I've said that this is sort of the direction that we need to go. So Jack Dorsey, uh, CEO of Twitter and Square Inc., is, he's given $5 million, right, uh, to do a means test, essentially to prove the point that universal basic income is necessary and is uh, going to work. Uh, first of all, this is dumb because we already have this. We already have the proof. We already have proof that universal basic income is necessary, and we already have proof that it does work. Look at Europe. Europe is doing a universal basic income. They are guaranteeing 90% of people's paychecks. They're doing a version of it. It's not universal basic income to the T, to the definition of it, but they're giving people a monthly paycheck every single month so that companies don't have to fire people, so that the unemployment numbers don't have to skyrocket. They're already doing it. There's the proof right there. Just look at what's going on in Europe. Most of these European countries haven't even hit 5% in their unemployment numbers. We're about to hit 30. We're about to hit 30% unemployment. 30% of people that are applying for unemployment right now, the, you know, which is like the regular unemployment payment plus $600 a week, because the government's like, oh, yeah, we got to give people money, but they have to go through this weird channel to, to get it. You got to you, and, and then we have to vet you. And then we got to make sure that you're that you match all of these specific criteria so that people, you know, who, who don't who are maybe on a cash program. Right. Uh, their job is primarily cash based, uh, won't be eligible for it. This gives everybody their money. This says this is this is what you seem to be making. So we're going to give you that money. That's what they're doing in Europe. They're doing seventy to ninety percent, uh, and it's and it's working. Proof is done. Why do we need fucking Jack Dorsey to do any of this shit? What we need is Jack Dorsey to go up to fucking Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell and say, "Hey, uh, I will stop funding your dumbass campaigns if you don't do this thing." But he's not going to because he's a he's a billionaire uh, and uh, and he needs to have them continue to legislate on his behalf. We're the only first world country that's not doing universal basic income or paycheck protections or any of that sort of stuff uh, or paycheck guarantee. We're, we're doing a paycheck protection, which I've talked to a bunch of small businesses for my podcast, Taboo Table Talk, and 
the majority of the of the conversation I'm having is, yeah, it sometimes helps, but also some of the businesses don't want to get it because, um, you know, it's it's going to fuck over their employees. So we're the only country that's not doing this paycheck guarantee program, this universal basic income program. Um, we're currently deliberating whether we should be giving people another one-time payment of $1,200. Uh, and then we're, and then the Democrats are deliberating on how to get average Americans to purchase health care they can't afford right now. Oh, people are getting knocked off their, their employer connected health care. The hostage situation uh, of that we call health care in America. Oh, they're getting knocked off of it. We should get them to, to buy it from private insurance companies themselves. So then they could be in a hostage situation with private insurance companies. That's what we're doing in the greatest country in the world. That doesn't seem to know how to take care of its citizens, right? Like they're they're basically go looking at people and being like, yeah, but isn't isn't your health worth one third of your paycheck every single month? Isn't it worth one third of your savings account every single month? Don't you want you don't you want to live? Don't you want your family to survive? So give us one third, and we'll make sure that maybe maybe your family will survive. These guys are like fucking sociopathic supervillains twirling their mustaches as they tie up, you know, uh, damsels in distress to a fucking train track. That's what the healthcare system is in America. So Andrew Yang is planning on taking this $5 million from Jack Dorsey, uh, and he's giving it to 20,000 20, Americans that get a one-time payment of $250 which is arguably worse than what Pelosi did because um, $250 isn't going to cover fucking dick all. Also, this is not means testing UBI. Means testing UBI would be uh, Jack Dorsey giving $5 million per month to, uh, to Andrew Yang's Humanity First. Uh, and then Andrew Yang con converts that into $250 a month for... Uh, the recipients that uh, have applied for it. So once again, we're still going through this weird application process. Um, so it's no different than trying to go through unemployment. Andrew Yang went on CNN to talk about this, and he basically said, hey, we were getting more than 20,000 people uh, coming to the Humanity First website to apply for uh, whatever donations we could do, we could give them. Right. Uh, people, regular average people will donate to humanity first and then we pool that money and then divvy that up. Uh, I went through that. I went through that for a couple of different art arts grants in the very beginning of this. And those arts grants have officially now dried up because in the beginning, you had a lot of people that had money uh, that were still getting uh, paid, that were still getting some kind of a stimulus of some kind, whether it's from the government, whether it's from uh, the job that they still have, whether it's from uh, other grants or means or whatever. And, um, and you know, that well is dried up, as is the Humanity First donation well, which is why you have someone like Jack Dorsey dumping $5 million into it. Um, but... 250 bucks, a one-time payment of 250 bucks is not means testing universal basic income. It's just not, and it's going to get rejected. And you're going to have a bunch of conservatives come out and basically use this and, and mock it to say that it doesn't work. Again, look at fucking Europe. Again, look at, look at the people that are getting unemployment during this pandemic in this country. I talked about it last week on my podcast that People on unemployment are making more than essential workers. That's the state of things right now. You could just take the unemployment and roll it into fucking universal basic income for every adult in this country and give people what they need. 
tack that in with with uh, rent and debt cancellation, and people like you will actually see average Americans re-stimulating the economy. It, since that's kind of the big thing that everybody in America is worried about. I don't really hear a lot of European stories about lockdown protesters to reopen the economy. $250 ain't going to cover dick all for people. It's really not. I consider myself lucky um, that I don't really have uh, the same level of expenses that other people do. I can, I'm, And I'm very thankful for the people that have made donations, that have bought tickets to the show to help me cover the expenses that I do have uh, that are not going away right now. So, you know, it's like, but $250 doesn't even cover my car payment. I have car payments. I have uh, payments for uh, all of the online services that I use, right? The hosting for my podcast, the hosting for my Zoom shows, the hosting for my website. Um, those, are, those are occupational payments that I need to make. Those are the payments that I have right now. And $250 barely covers that. And I'm lucky. I'm, I, I don't have an extraordinary amount of payments to make. I don't have that many expenses. An average family has rent or a mortgage. They might have a car payment. They might have additional debt to other banks, health insurance, utilities to pay for, groceries, medicine, internet, cable services. $250 ain't going to cover that. It'll help kind of maybe for the month of June, but where do we go from there? That's the point of universal basic income. And this is not means testing it. <laughs> and here's the problem that I had with uh, Andrew Yang's UBI uh, is that it kind of really wasn't UBI. It was this very rudimentary plan, and it used the social safety nets that we already have in place, right? The social security, the welfare payments, the SNAP program, and it used it as a stepping stool instead of a baseline. What we should be talking about is um, let's look at SNAP benefits. Let's look at uh, social security, welfare, unemployment. Look at those numbers all across the country every single state and average that shit out. And that's where you start. Is that average about a thousand dollars a month? Is it $1,200 a month? Is it 1500? Let's say it is to that. We start at that. We start at whatever that average is. And then we add up on top of it. That's how UBI should work. To me, UBI, you should be able to cover uh, rent, food, Water, health insurance, internet. Those are the things are, that are basic needs in our society right now. And all five of those things, if, if the baseline for that shit starts at $2,000 a month, then that's where we fucking start. Now, one of the things Andrew Yang advocated for was a value added tax, which uh, which they do in Europe, which is also like kind of the way that they help pay for, for UBI and things of that sort. He wanted to add this value added tax in the United States to tech companies, uh, such as Twitter and Facebook, which means that rich people, the ultra rich, the fucking billionaires uh, up at the top would actually have to pay their fucking taxes. Holy shit, what a concept, what a concept. They would pay their taxes that would help fund something like UBI, which would help average working class people pay their bills, stimulate their economies. It's kind of like if trickle down actually fucking worked. Holy shit. What? So the question has to be, uh, why is Jack Dorsey doing, th doing this? 
And it has to go back to this value added tax that we just talked about. Um, it goes back to adding this VAT to make sure UBI will work, which is a lot of letters. So follow me on this. Uh, Jack Dorsey said he wants to give away $1, million, $1 billion of his $4.6 billion uh, net worth to his nonprofit that he owns called Start Small, which is hilarious that it, th if you look at it, is $1 billion to Jack Dorsey is starting small. To most of us, $1 billion is an astronomical number is an unattainable fucking number when we talk about wealth. Start Small is a nonprofit that was first registered in Delaware, which is a tax haven. That's where, that's where you register shell corporations so you can evade your taxes as a fucking billionaire in the United States if you don't want to use the Cayman Islands or some shit. You know, you, America first, you guys. If you're going to evade taxes, do it in America first. Go to Delaware. It's all about America first on that front. And then he re-registered it as a, as a 5013C nonprofit in California. So basically, at this point, if he publicly gives away his money, um, he gets a tax write-off, and then he gets an incentive for publicly saying that he's going to give his money away. So publicly speaking, this dude is going to come out on top because he's doing it this way. He went on Andrew Yang's podcast to announce this plan. Uh, he's going to give away one about one fourth of his wealth tax free. We're, the, the logic is that then it goes to humanity first, who then another venture capitalist millionaire is going to give us $250 million, $250. He's going to give 20,000 people $250, a one-time payment, um, which is probably going to wind up being taxed for us. It's going to come in as some kind of a grant, but I'm sure they'll be like, well, it's an income. You made income. You're going to get taxed on it. Kind of like the, the stimulus checks. Uh, and then they'll use that tax money to write legislation on behalf of Jack Dorsey. To make Jack Dorsey an even bigger billionaire. And then he gets to do this again. Where he'll go, oh, I'm going to give away another billion dollars so that I can make six billion dollars. So he's getting ahead of that VAT. Because here's the thing. Um... Universal basic income means that automation is on its way. And automation is on its way, regardless of what happens. Automation is coming. Uh, there's no fucking way that uh, all the people that have been laid off, they're not all going to get the, their jobs back. Some of these manufacturing jobs are probably not going to come back because the corporations are going to see uh, that they can still make a shit ton of money without these people. That's kind of what we're seeing with, with things like Amazon and Instacart and shit like that. Because they're still going to make money. So they're, gonna, they're either going to find strike breakers, they're either going to find a replacement workers, or they're going to automate, or they're going to go to a different country to do it. Do you think fucking Amazon needs to have warehouses in America to make this shit work? If, if there's enough strikers, they'll go to China. Again, or they'll go to Bangladesh or they'll go to somewhere else to, to, for, to put, you know, put these fulfillment centers in place. Because, the, because America is too demanding. Like, that's what's going to happen. And, or they'll just automate it. Or they'll, they'll, they'll figure out how to use uh, automation in their fulfillment centers. That's coming regardless. Which means that if we go to a UBI, we'll have to do a value-added tax on their company, which means that they'll get taxed a lot more. And they're going to get taxed at a much higher number, right? Their percentage will probably be similar to ours, but that percentage means a larger number for them. And they're getting ahead of it by doing this publicly related, oh, I'm going to give $5 million. Uh, a total, I'm giving away a billion dollars, but I'm giving $5 million now because I'm a good guy, you know? $5 million is a fraction of a percent of what he's actually intending on giving away. And he's getting ahead of it because he's donating it. So it's going to come off tax-free 
the dude gets to make a shit ton more money. His public image will go up. His stocks will rise, which means he'll be able to buy those back and then give those away and then get even more incentives. And then it just loops. It's just a fucking loop looping system that that's going to throw Jack Dorsey at the top of it each and every time. And we get little pittance and he gets to stay ahead of this VAT. And then they get to look at it and be like, well, it looks like uh, universal basic income doesn't work. Yeah, it would work if you didn't have cheating loopholes for fucking billionaire CEOs. Also, this idea is not means testing fucking UBI. It's just not. <laughs> like, you're giving a one-time payment of $250. That's like saying Nancy Pelosi is fucking doing UBI because she gave you one check of 1200 bucks that took six weeks to get to you. That's not... These aren't UBI plans, guys. Look at Europe. That's a UBI plan. That's that's where it should have fucking ended. Moving on to the next co uh, topic of conversation. Uh, what Nick Nick says? New hair, new man. It's new hair. It's same old Chris, man. I'm so I'm I've been yelling about these things for a long fucking time. I'm going to continue to yell about them despite what the hair looks like. <laughs> Appreciate the comment, brother. Uh, so our second, uh, second topic of conversation is um, about Joe Rogan. We had a big announcement from, uh, from, from uh, Joe Rogan, Joe Brogan. Uh, bro Rogan, as some people have known to call him. Uh, the everyman's bro, as, as I used to call him, but no longer, no longer will I call him the everyman's bro, uh, based on, based on this, this story here. Um, so earlier this week, we saw a story where Joe Rogan signed an exclusive licensing agreement with Spotify um, that was apparently for over $100 million, uh, which checks out because Spotify has been paying a shit ton of money to acquire a bunch of podcasts. Um, that's, um, that's just what they do. That's just what they've been doing. Uh, they bought a company called anchor, which, uh, which used to host my podcast. And I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, and if you've been paying attention to all my videos, then you know exactly what the fuck I'm going to talk about. Um, but, uh, Joe, um, they, they acquired, uh, they acquired anchor for, um, uh, over a hundred million dollars as well. They Gimlet media is something else they acquired for over a hundred million dollars. Um, they, uh, so they've been doing this. They, they've been trying to exclusively expand their podcast, uh, library and becoming becoming a not just a music platform but also a podcasting platform. I think that's what they really want. Here's what's peculiar about this: in February of 2020, um, Rogan basically said because apparently a lot of his fans I, I didn't know this, uh, but he's not on Spotify for for podcasting. I didn't know this because I don't listen to podcasts on Spotify. I think I've listened to like two or three podcasts on Spotify because my buddy's podcast, uh, my friend Dan Brady's podcast is on Spotify, so so I listen I listen to it there. Um, and, um, you know, I, so I didn't know Joe Rogan was not on Spotify. I, I use, I use the, the Stitcher app. Um, you know, uh, when I, when I, when I do listen to podcasts, I use that app. I haven't used it in quite some time, or I go to the website of the podcast itself. Um, so Joe Rogan is on YouTube. So most of the time I either listen to him on YouTube or if I'm driving, which hasn't really been a thing lately uh because my tours have been slowed down i would listen to it through the stitcher app right that's that's what i would do i didn't i didn't even know that he wasn't on fucking spotify but apparently he's not and a lot of his fans um excuse me I can hold dust in my eye uh, a lot of his fans have been complaining about it they've been saying that uh, you know they they want him on spotify and he said that he doesn't want to be on spotify and this is, goes back to february 2020 is what i read uh, that he, he, he doesn't want to go on Spotify because they don't treat their artists properly, which they don't. They only give uh, their artists um, fractions of a penny per stream. So for someone like me, I get 
like four dollars from Spotify every year. <laughs> some are, are like some ridiculous small amount of money. Uh, I don't I don't make shit from Spotify. I mean, my stuff's on that on that platform because, you know, it's like that's. That's how it, it, it's, it's more of a notoriety thing, I guess, to be like, oh, my God, you're on Spotify. That's fucking crazy. Like getting on iTunes was like a big fucking deal. You know, like if you if you were a, a touring comedian that got your shit on iTunes, they put that on all the posters to be like iTunes guy. He's an iTunes guy, you know, and it was just like, it's not that hard to fucking get on iTunes or Spotify, like, but it is become the, like this weird status thing of, um, and then people get, get like they did with Joe Rogan. They get mad if you're not on fucking Spotify. Cause they're like, it's, it's not, it's so much harder to find your shit. But it's like, that's why I fucking put my stuff on Bandcamp because it's just a better platform. And I get a lot more through people finding my shit and starting uh, playlists and radios from Pandora than I do from Spotify as an artist, right? I get way more from that. And I think Pandora is partnered with Sirius or some shit. I don't know. All the stuff is, it starts to get more complicated and, you know, who part who's partnering with who. It's very easy to lose track of. Um, so Rogan moved to, has moved to, to Spotify for uh, uh, over a hundred million dollars. It's a licensing agreement, which basically says <laughs> his entire library is now going to move to Spotify. Um, and throughout the rest of the year, he will continue to put out his interviews and his show on YouTube and keep it on all the other platforms. And then in December, it'll be exclusively on Spotify. And then it'll be off all the other platforms. So now there's an exclusivity contract and that exclusivity contract is a hundred over a hundred million dollars for Joe Rogan. Here's my problem with it. He, you know, Joe, Joe Rogan has come out and said, Oh, they're not going to control what I say. I still get to pick my guests. I still get to, you know, choose all the things that I'm doing and I'm, I'm saying and all that sort of stuff. But here's the deal. You guys, um, Spotify is not above censorship. Just like YouTube wasn't above censorship, um, and throttling people's pages, um, from, from top to bottom, by the way, and on the left and on the right, YouTube was doing this. We know this. We've seen a bunch of commentators that are much bigger than I am that have talked about this. I have been throttled on YouTube several times, even through throughout this pandemic for talking about, you know, things against the establishment. If I go against establishment politics, or if I say something that, um, you know, like talked about UBI, as I just did, it will throttle the fucking page. If it, and, and if it picks up steam, especially like there are certain videos that, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big, I'm just not a big fuck. I'm, I'm not famous. I know that. So if I get a couple hundred hits on, on Facebook and I get a handful of hits on, on YouTube, I, I think that's a, a success for me because that's just where I am. Theoretically, my videos on Facebook should be getting upwards of 3000 views if it sends it to every single person that likes my page, but they fucking don't. Theoretically, every single video on YouTube should get about three to 400 views uh, based on how many subscribers I have, but they don't send it out to all my subscribers all the time. I have people that have subscribed to my YouTube channel that find videos like a month ago and, and you know, they're, they're like, how, how did I not fucking see this when this came out? It's because YouTube doesn't show it to people. It doesn't come up on the recommended lists. Which is why it's so stupid, but that's why I keep saying, like, hit the like button, hit the share button, do the subscribing thing. Like, it, because it because for small fries like me that, that are getting throttled, like, that's a thing that they need to do. Um, so platforms like YouTube will, so, you know, will throttle your pages. They will stop the views. They will stop recommending you to people that are subs even subscribed to you. I know that happens to me with pages that I'm subscribed to like the Jimmy Dore show uh, or Abby Martin's Empire Files or Lee Camp's Redacted Tonight, uh, even Ron Placone's Get, like, Get Your News On With Ron, Graham Elwood, Kim Iverson, all these people that I listen to that talk about these 
um, quote unquote fringy alternative topics, which are just like, these are things we should be discussing on the daily basis. Anyway, we should be discussing these ideas. We shouldn't be talking about fucking cat videos all the time, you know? Um, but it's not just YouTube and Facebook that do this censorship sh thing. Spotify has done it too. And they did it to me. I, and and I'm a small fry. Again, I'm 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 a small fish in a very big pond. I understand that, um, but that's why they choose the small fish because the small fish, even if it makes a lot of noise, isn't going to get heard by that many people. Uh, but I'm lucky to have friends that are um, that have much larger presences and much more famous shows than I do uh, that help me out. So if if you if you missed it uh, back in March. My entire podcast library was deleted by Spotify. Uh, I mentioned earlier that Spotify owns a company called Anchor, anchor.fm. That's where my podcast was being hosted. Um, I have a band uh, called Old Game. They actually gave me this, this thank you card because I bought a bunch of their pins because I like, I like collecting pins. So I bought their pin collection um, that I put on like jackets and stuff. Uh, old game gave me permission to use one of their songs as my intro song. So if you watch my clips on, on, on YouTube or Facebook or listen to it on, um, on a audio podcasting platform, you will hear it. I don't know if this was the claim or not, but somebody put a copyright claim, which is so weird because that means that old game would have had to put a copyright claim which I know they didn't fucking do because they gave me permission to use their stuff. Not only that, but I credit them every single time, every single episode, every single thing that I do. You can even see it in the description of this video that I put their link. I credit them every single time. So it didn't make any sense as to why I was getting this copyright claim. Contacted Spotify for two days straight at trying to ask them about um, hey, what, what's this copyright claim? Why are you guys saying there's a copyright claim? I can't upload any, uh, any content, uh, onto my podcasting thing. What's going on with this copyright claim? I got no answers. 48 hours later, I get an email at, a, at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm on tour. I'm on the road. I'm in the middle, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of, uh, this thing. And, uh, I get an email that says that my entire podcast library over two, 300 episodes that I've, that I've, I've been doing these shows for five years gone. They deleted it under the guise of a copyright claim that they never explained to me what that copyright claim was. The, the last two episodes I threw up were pro Bernie Sanders and pro Tulsi Gabbard episodes. And it, your opinion of those candidates is not, really important in this situation. You can dislike those candidates. You can disagree with them. You can disagree with what I'm saying. The point being is that they deleted my shit because they have an agenda. My agenda didn't fit with them. They made up a claim that they never explained and then deleted my entire fucking library. Fortunately, fortunately, um, you could have still gone to Stitcher or iTunes um, and and still found my podcast. They were still active on those sites, but I couldn't upload any new content because the hosting site was Anchor.fm, which is a Spotify company. So if Spotify deems that something isn't right, everything on Anchor.fm could just disappear in the blink of an eye. So now you have someone, and that's just me, right? I'm a small fry with a couple thousand people on my Facebook page, a couple hundred people on my YouTube channel, and a handful of people that listen to my audio stuff. That's, that's sort of the reality of it. My podcast, when it was on Anchor, was getting roughly 100 to 200 downloads a month, a month on that platform. They weren't helping me out in the least fucking bit. I moved my podcast. So basically the way I got my podcast back is... Uh, Hard Lens Media uh, talked about did did a whole thing. Uh, they interviewed me talking about this level of censorship. And Lee Camp, my, who's a good friend of mine, um, you know, he kind of made it public about uh, what happened. 
and uh, and all of a sudden, Anchor wanted to get my podcast back, and they and so they kept saying it's a copyright claim. I have all of these emails and screen caps and all this stuff, and I want to do a big big uh, piece about it. I, I I ranted about it on my page, uh, but I want to write a thing about it, and I think I'm going to write a thing about it um, here in the in 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 the coming weeks and and things of that sort. Um, but uh, you know. Lee did a tweet. Or there's a bunch of people that commented on it, and all of a sudden, Anchor was interested in getting my podcast back up as quickly as possible. And then they changed their tune like that. It was no longer about a copyright claim, but it was a glitch in their servers. That's what it became. A glitch in their servers is why my podcast disappeared. Uh, and then I have a separate podcast called Taboo Table Talk, and they were like, look, that one's still there. And I was like, that's not the right fucking podcast. So I went through this whole big fucking thing. Joe Rogan talks to controversial people all the time. He says that they don't control what he's going to say, and they probably don't. But let's say Joe Rogan has a particularly controversial figure, um, and they don't like Spotify. And they start talking about this shit that Spotify does. And they're and they're talking about how Spotify doesn't treat their artists properly, and you know a lot of the stuff that I'm I'm about to cover right now. They start talking about it, uh, and and Joe Rogan brings them up, uh, and he does an interview with them, and uh, you know, and uh, Spotify goes, yeah, this is ridiculous, and then uh oh, Joe Rogan, you went with against our content uh, creation, our our. Uh, you violated our terms and services. Uh oh. Boom. Rogan's podcast disappears, or that episode disappears, or that episode gets throttled, doesn't get shown to people. What does Joe Rogan do then? It's it's a very very strange thing. Um. And realistically, the this this acquisition of Joe Rogan, and I think some other, the Ringer. I'm not familiar with this podcast, but I but uh, again, it's a it's a podcast that apparently has a pretty large following. Uh, has also been purchased uh, as part of a licensing agreement uh, by Spotify for over a hundred million dollars. They're they're spending over a hundred million dollars in in doing this sort of stuff, right? Um. So. Uh, this basically is a way for Spotify to help itself uh, gain a lot. Of, I think this is a a more positive move for Spotify than it is for Joe Rogan, if if you want my opinion. But I, I also think like Joe Rogan is cashing out because again, February he was like, no, I'm not going to go to Spotify because they don't fucking pay their artists, and all of a sudden he gets a, over a hundred million dollars, um, or that so says the reporting, right? Um, all of a sudden, then he moves to this platform that he was against. Uh, Steven Tyler, the Aerosmith guy. Steven Tyler? Uh, he went on Joe Rogan's podcast and basically said how, uh, yeah, you know, Sp Spotify is not helping out artists. It, it, it cashes itself out a whole lot more through ad revenues, through, um, through uh, users paying for their premium plan. Uh, and it doesn't really pay their artists very well. It actually pays record companies a lot more. So if you're affiliated with a record company, um, the record company is getting a bigger cut of the deal uh, than the artists are. So with Rogan, uh, that was on Rogan's podcast. So he was against it then, and now he gets paid $100 million on board with Spotify by December exclusively on Spotify. Uh, Rogan has a, a, about 190 million subscribers, uh, or, or he gets 190 million downloads, something along those lines, uh, that are all now going to have to download Spotify to get his podcast. They're all going to have to download that. So that's a huge fucking bump for, for people downloading Spotify. And their, their, um, their, their, their stocks just went up by 11% after making this announcement. Uh, their revenue comes specifically from ads, and they keep most of it. Uh, and with podcasting, 
they don't really have to share a whole lot of their revenue in this model. Um, like my podcast is on Spotify still, you know, because I use Libsyn and Libsyn distributes to Spotify. That's one of the things that they do distribute to. And uh, I get, again, it's like I get some downloads, but it's like, I don't really see any currency from them. They don't, they don't cash out on their podcasts. They, they will probably cash out through ad partnerships for Joe Rogan, for The Ringer, for some of these larger podcasts that they have. Um, but uh, I don't, I mean, like the small fries and stuff, like my buddy Dan's podcast, uh, What in the History is not fucking getting any money. Uh, it was also revealed that Joe Rogan makes about $75,000 per episode through his own ads. So now you got to look at who advertises with Joe Rogan? Who's advertising with The Ringer? Because all of that is now going to be filtered through Spotify. So Joe Rogan gets to keep his own ad revenue, right? So he's probably going to get to keep that $75,000 per episode because they're specifically his thing. <laughs> but what is, what, is, what is stopping Spotify from going to his advertisers and trying to make an exclusive kind of contract with them? to say, hey, um, we would like you to advertise with us and we will exclude, we will 100% play you in, in front of Joe Rogan and you can still have your ad contracting with Joe Rogan. So it complicates the ad model just a little bit. Um, but now they'll like Cash App. Uh-oh, ca okay, Cash App is not gonna start advertising um, in front of podcasts on Spotify. New, new listeners means new, more ad revenue because, right, more people are going to be listening to those ads. Uh, it's based on per download, per song or playlist or however it is. Um, they have to spend less in giving back to artists because they have a ton of podcasts now. Now that Joe Rogan's on there, more people are going to want to be on Spotify because the Rogan listeners are on Spotify and maybe I'll get a little bit of – I'll get a little bump. Because, you know, my podcast is coming up in the same genre or gets recommended. Uh, if you listen to Joe Rogan, maybe listen to Forkful of Noodles. Maybe listen to Taboo Table Talk. Oh, so I, get, I, better, I better jump on that Spotify train. But, I'm, but, you know, these smaller podcasts aren't getting anything out of it. Not only that, there's also uh, records that if you are a premium member of Spotify, you still get ads. So they double dip on the ad revenue. Now they get money to also create their own podcasts. That's the future of, of Spotify is Spotify exclusive podcasting, which are going to have their own bias, which they have a very neoliberal bias, uh, in my opinion. So that also means that that's less money out of their pockets. So they get to keep even more of their ad revenue. They have more people downloading their platform. And it becomes Spotify versus every other podcasting avenue. Like it became YouTube versus every other video distribution platform, right? Like Vimeo is like, it's really hard for, for me to put anything up on Vimeo because uh, I have to purchase a bunch of space on Vimeo and I don't have the currency to do that. Um, but maybe I will get seen by more people on Vimeo. I don't know. I don't know if that's worth it or not. It's, you know, so it's a, for, for someone like me, it's just a difficult gamble to take. Um, so it, be, it becomes this battle for, do you go on this big conglomerate that basically can throttle you and censor you at any moment? Not really give you any reasons for doing it. Or do you keep doing what you're doing? I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna keep cho choosing to do what I'm doing, right? So I'll, like I, I mentioned about two months ago that I have cut back on what audio podcasts I upload because of space um, and the amount of funds that I have to allocate uh, to said podcast. Um, 
but I mean, I can't, I'm not going to exclusively go just to Spotify. And I, I mean, I, I, I barely, barely use Spotify as it is. I'm switching all of my stuff to Pandora. I've been working on that for a little while. Cause I did, I mean, I did build, I built like a bunch of playlists and stuff. Like I don't, I don't recommend Spotify to people anymore. Um, uh, not just that too, is like, this is also a data privacy issue because now they're going to collect your data as a user based on what podcasts you listen to and target your ad specifically to that. So they, they can also sell your data to the advertisers that they have. And they're going to use Joe Rogan and the ringer as a vehicle in order to do that, uh, which is also a major problem, which is also a major problem. All in all, this, this deal doesn't seem like it uh, benefits anybody other than Spotify. That's what I think. I think Spotify essentially found their cash cow. Uh, Joe Rogan's still going to be a multimillionaire. He's still going to do his podcast and get you know millions and millions of downloads and listens. Um, Spotify is going to... Their stocks already went up. Their stocks are probably due to continue to go up. And I was kind of waiting for this sort of shit to happen. Um, I had a friend of mine that posted John Krasinski. If you're familiar with John Krasinski, he's from The Office, probably most famous for The Office. Uh, but he's also done movies like A Quiet Place. Um, he's in talks to, like, everybody wants him to be Reed Richards uh, when they do Fantastic Four in the MCU. Uh, dude's been doing something called Some Good News. And did it independently on his YouTube channel. It ended up getting like uh, a bajillion subscribers, right? Um, because he's a famous guy. So he's, uh, you know, once he starts doing some stuff. Uh, and it was a cute kind of feel-good uh, popcorn show where he was talking about like what people are doing to keep their spirits up, right? Talking about the good news and stuff. Well, it's been acquired by Viacom. The eight episodes. They aired for eight weeks. And it, and it got enough hits that it got acquired by Viacom. Um, and he's no longer going to host it. it. The concept is going to be similar, but Viacom's going to do what Viacom's going to do with it. And, that, you know, it's like in the beginning of all this, I had a feeling something like that would happen. Where we were going to see these big fucking money deals go down. Where people are going to start doing independent projects like what John Krasinski did, or they're going to take existing independent projects, which we're going to see a bigger spike in, like the Joe Rogan podcast. I'm sure a lot of people started listening to, to Joe Rogan, especially since during the election, um, first of all, every single fucking candidate wanted to be on Joe Rogan, right? Like Joe Biden's campaign was calling Joe Rogan fucking Klobuchar and Mayor Pete. Uh, they all wanted to talk to Joe Rogan, um, and he declined them. And then the establishment pretty much went after him uh, and, and trashed him for no fucking reason. Uh, and, uh, I'm sure that spiked his numbers and I'm sure the pandemic spiked his numbers as well, which meant that, okay, somebody's going to have to offer him more money to come exclusively be on their platform. And that's essentially what happened with Spotify. And that's essentially what happened with Viacom. Any celebrity doing anything right now, um, is likely to probably get some kind of a big money fucking deal. There are touring artists in this country that are struggling on a daily basis. Me aside, there's a lot of my friends, a lot of other very talented people that I know that have switched uh, and adapted to doing something different that are getting looked over because of things like this, uh, which is the other half of what is very disappointing about all this, is because you have extremely talented people that are going to get looked over. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would wager to bet that John Krasinski wasn't the only one that was doing a feel-good po uh, popcorn podcasty show. I'm not saying it was bad. I watched a couple episodes; they seemed fine. They, they were mindless entertainment. There are a bunch of other podcasts where people talk to Shane Moss. is a great podcast called here. We are it, like discovery channel. Didn't fucking pick that up where he, he talks to academics about 
what their research is. It's a fantastic podcast. I will admit that I have not kept up on it since this pandemic started because it was primarily a podcast I listened to when I was driving. And I have not been doing a lot of long, long distance driving. But I catch, his, uh, I catch the clips that he throws up on Instagram. He, got, he was very generous enough to come do my podcast. Uh, Shane Moss isn't getting a call from Discovery Channel. And he's somebody that has made his career from touring, made his career from these really interesting and creative projects. Still talks to interesting people, just like Joe Rogan does. Spotify is not knocking on his door to do an exclusive deal, and I don't think he would take it. These exclusive deals are not, they don't help anybody but these corporations. What are Joe Rogan listeners getting out of this? I, I really don't see what they're getting out of this. Now they just have to go to Spotify. That's it. I mean, honestly, like if he ended up going just on Spotify and kept all of his other, like, I, fine. I would have been fine with that. But the fact that it's an exclusivity contract, this exclusive licensing agreement, that's kind of what I have an issue with. This doesn't help anybody but Spotify. And for somebody that three and a half months ago was saying that uh, Spotify doesn't treat their, their artists properly, so I can't support them. It's, it's very, very strange. And I like Joe Rogan. I really did. Um, and I probably kind of still do, although it's moving down the list a little bit. I think he puts up interesting interviews and interesting content. And I enjoy listening to them. And I enjoyed watching them on YouTube. That's, a, that's where I watch a bunch of shit. And now it's not going to be on there anymore. And now a bunch of, uh, uh, and now a platform that essentially censored and deleted me. So I do have some sort of personal bias against it. It's going to have this podcast on there. And how many other podcasts are they going to buy out? This also shows up that they can do this to any content that they don't like. So that if they wanted to buy them out, um, they could, they could buy up a smaller podcast that they, you know, that, that has episodes that they disagree with and then and then put in and say, hey, we're just not going to upload your podcast anymore. We're going to figure out what we want to do with that. That's also a possibility. That, that Pandora's box is now open, that they can go to a smaller podcast, offer them $100 million and say, hey, you're now on our platform, so you kind of have to listen to what we're doing. We threw money at you to do it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they went to Joe Rogan uh, in, in 2021, if, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some stories about Spotify um, trying to censor Joe Rogan more than YouTube. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm going to take a look at the comment that we got. Uh, Jeff Harris, very interested in this part of the conversation. I hope you, I hope you found it interesting. Um, and your question, as artists, how are we going to get Spotify to change their money distribution model? Uh, the stream pool to their user centric. That's a good question. I mean, really, it's I, I don't have an exact answer for that. The only the only thing I can say is um, encourage people to go to other platforms. So if you are a uh, a podcaster, uh, if you're an if you're a musician, comedian, spoken word, whatever and you have something on Spotify, because like I said, um, having something on Spotify for, for as much as I don't like it as a platform, it is a status thing. It's a like clubs will fucking ask me if I'm on Spotify, you know, or like venues or bookers or whoever, just because it's like a thing that they can throw on a poster. Cause you know, um, people that aren't so savvy, people that aren't looking into the to, into the little nuances of things. And I disagree with that viewpoint. I think, I think, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of relate back in your everyday life that relate back to politics anyway, whatever, that's a different argument, but um, they don't pay attention to this sort of stuff. So what, what we can do is encourage people to go to other platforms. Like I don't share a Spotify link. Um, a lot of times I might've shared one or two, you know, but I don't really share Spotify links. If I can find the website, um, like I'm on Libsyn, 
if I find other podcasts that I like that are on Libsyn, I'll share their Libsyn link. Um, I'll share their Stitcher link. Um, I don't really share the Spotify link very much. Um, so that's something we can do, you know? And even if it is, let's say collectively, it ends up being about a thousand people that aren't on Spotify anymore, that aren't using that platform as much anymore. Um, that That's still hurting them where their money is. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a bunch of, uh, I, I haven't seen it. I've seen more commenters like myself. And I think, I think Jimmy Dore is the only other person that really talked about it in, in some capacity. Um, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if more people come out and they kind of boycott this a little bit. Um, and I'm, I have to do my research on, on the psychology and stuff behind boycotts and whether boycotts do work or, or they don't work or in what capacity they do work. But I, I do, I do think that they do work in some capacity um, and encouraging people to go to your website or go to your Libsyn page or go to, you know, a downloading it on Stitcher or whatever, whatever other app that you, that you suggest. I think that's a better move. Like I'm off anchor, you know, did it, did it increase my expenses because of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. It did. Um, Anchor was a free platform and I was making like, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks a month uh, by doing some of their sponsored content. Um, I said, fuck it. It's not worth it. And I'm basically spending about a hundred bucks um, on, uh, on hosting fees with Libsyn. I'm getting a lot more exposure and a lot more downloads through Libsyn because I think Libsyn puts it on more platforms and I think Lipson is a more search accessible platform. Um, and you know, I, I don't really get a lot of listens from Spotify. So I think anchor was more geared to trying to get people to listen to you on Spotify than they were on other platforms. So again, it's like there is a bias even with me using their hosting platforms. I don't know. I, I, yeah but we might not get them to change their model. I think their ad centric model, cause they're, cause they're, their, their model is really more ad centric than it is anything else. Like I said, even if you're a premium member, they are still playing ads, um, especially in front of, especially in front of podcasts, they're still playing ads. So they get to double dip and get, and, and still make more money off of, off of podcasting. So I don't encourage anybody to um, to listen to my stuff on on Spotify. <laughs> like I just, you know, it's just like they they're they're not particularly great. I I, I don't know. I, I I hope this was a satisfying answer um, to, your, to to your question. It's not really a hopeful answer, uh, but I, I I will I will say that I I I find more um, I don't know. I, I find it more satisfying to go directly to the source itself. Um, you know, so I encourage people to watch these videos either on my Facebook page because that helps me with the, with the social media bullshit, uh, or to go directly to my YouTube channel or better yet, follow my website and watch it on my website. I post all of my videos and I post all of my stuff to my website. So if, um, you know, if, if, if you're looking to really find a place to, to, uh, to get my podcasts boom there it is um pretty much the conclusion i've shared with uh, and others have shared yeah i think that's that's sort of the right way to go uh i'm, I'm glad i'm glad you you know you, you you got something out of that answer um so yeah that's my big encouragement to people is if you have a problem with it hey maybe fucking tell joe rogan right he's got he's on twitter or whatever tell him hey i think going to spotify is not a great idea here's why and, and, and see what happens. Um, uh, you know, it, it, I, I'm, I'm probably not going to listen to Joe Rogan after 2020. If you want my honest opinion, I like the guy. Uh, I think he's a, he's a decent interviewer. He's had some really interesting guests on. He had some really interesting, um, conversations and I've used them as sources on my videos because a lot of the things that, you know, they, they are like accredited people on his, um, on his podcast. Uh, but once he moves to Spotify, you know, 
I get that I have a little bit of a personal bias towards it. I don't think I'm going to listen to his podcast going forward. Um, yeah, I think that's sort of my conclusion with it. All right, folks, uh, we are going to wrap up this live stream here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, thank you so much for leaving comments, uh, especially if you are a new viewer of this. Uh, uh, if you are a new viewer, uh, please hit the like button. Please hit the, uh, the, the share and the subscribing. Uh, let you know when I'm doing more of these live streams. Uh, I do them. Um, right now, I'm doing them uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Mondays. Uh, and then if there is something like breaking news that I feel like I need to talk about, I, I do them, uh, Tuesday, you know, throughout the week. Uh, but I'm cut back so that I can work on a couple of other projects. Uh, Taboo Table Talk is my interview podcast. I'm doing them twice a week because I'm doing highlights on small businesses across the country so we can get an accurate view of what's actually happening with small business America, uh, throughout the, the pandemic and the economic crisis that we are, uh, that we are currently in. Um, and, uh, just, just see what, what, what they're saying. Um, I work with a lot of small businesses as touring comedians. So, uh, I wanted to highlight those stories. Um, the other, the other thing is I'm still working on fork full of noodles. Um, I've got three episodes that are pretty extensive that I'm, that I'm, uh, slowly inching my way towards, uh, producing, uh, those will be released on my YouTube channel in the upcoming, uh, weeks. So stay tuned for that. I'm working as, as much as I can on that. Uh, and then my virtual stand-up comedy shows, uh, every Friday in June going forward, tickets are available for that right now. They're, they're five bucks. Um, and if you're in a financially precarious situation, please feel free to message me and I will get you a code for a free ticket, but you're still going to have to go through that ticketing site. Because as I mentioned at the top of the show, that is how I'm going to be able to send you the login information one hour before showtime. And that helps me consolidate all that stuff so that I all I have to do is send that information out once. Uh, because focusing on the show, m the technical aspects of it, and sending out all this stuff, it's just me. I'm just one guy kind of doing all this stuff. I don't have uh, a producer. I don't have... Uh, somebody that works my social media or any of that sort of stuff. It's just me. Uh, like I said, I'm sort of a small fry in the game, but, uh, you know, I like it. I, I like doing this sort of stuff. Uh, I, I do. Okay. Uh, I was making a living off of touring full time and, and making videos full time. So, uh, you know, seeing that all of that needs to be adjusted and tailored. That's, that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, new albums coming out. Pre-order is available for a dollar there. So if you enjoy uh, content like this, the uh, I talk about ideas like this in my in my standup. Um, so that's that's what the album is all about. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, you know, we'll keep keep supporting this. I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Uh, some of you have become sustaining members. Some of you guys have donated uh, to, to the show. Uh, those are all very, very, very helpful. Um, so if you would, if you have the ability to, and you can, uh, feel free to go and, uh, and, and become a, a sustaining member. Uh, you get a bunch of stuff, um, early access to albums, free ticket links, additional unreleased stand-up comedy and, uh, storytelling content. Uh, so you get a bunch of stuff for, for becoming a sustaining member that I do. Uh, and I think that's it. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow with a brand new episode. Uh, till then, stay safe, be well, and we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.